Take it away. It's what, what makes me an expert in this. Uh, as you can tell by my awesome shirt here, I used to work in uh, safety videos for uh, uh, for steel industry around the area for about six years. Uh, and on the side, started building this kind of stuff. Uh, online video, just other stuff that was more interesting to me at the time. Because safety videos, you know, you only do hand safety so many times, right? So, <laughs> so that was kind of my angle and how I got into this stuff. Um, and I was always, always interested in uh, exactly what, you know, I, I, I originally was supposed to go into web design, you know, bubble burst, went into video, but I saw an opportunity here uh, for a lot more communication. And I always loved video, never thought there was much work in it, especially in this area. I mean, so you go to Hollywood and be in a movie, right? And help with that, you know, ironically, Batman's here. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so I started podcasting, was a big thing that came up at the time. Started audio podcasting, I was a big pro wrestling fan. And uh, the Wrestling Mayhem show came out of that. And, uh, and, and recently I started building stuff and I'm doing this array of shows uh, for technology, for you know, some stuff about freelancing. Uh, this is kind of my proving ground of how I've learned things, how I've learned to communicate with people online, and uh, where I test things a lot of times too. Uh, you know, we've, te we've tested a lot of stuff that I've brought to clients you know, in the area uh, from doing some of these shows, from doing, you know, some like going to local Comic Con and doing interviews and learning how to do that, you know, and we've grown up to, you know, using iPhones or whatnot uh, to using, you know, HD cameras like the one that's filming the session. <coughs> um, I guess uh, first I kind of want to see kind of what level everybody's at, if you guys don't mind. I uh, just got, you know, just to make sure, like, what, uh, you guys say you work in, you work uh, with, with some television shows, right? So, and, uh, and you? I'm the TV Ministry of Christian Associates. Okay. I produce videos, produce TV, and used to work in commercial television. Okay. Um, I just, I work at Pennsylvania Women Work, I just want to make a video for the organization. Okay, okay, so um, so we got a little bit of traditional television kind of experience and and uh, a little bit just you're new to video in general or? I'm not, I mean I can do it like on a computer and stuff, but mm -hmm. my boss just wanted to come and <laughs> learn some more. So um, well the first thing, uh, the, the, the biggest tool that's been that's been around, I know a lot of groups around here have it, is uh, guys like this, the flip cam, which Ironically, I think they're cutting. <laughs> so, um, and I mean, it is probably the simplest device that you don't have to worry about anything to to get video. Um, it's got a big red. You turn it on. It's got a big red button. You hit it. You're ready to go. And you flip this guy out. Hence the flip. You plug it in. You grab your files. A lot of times it comes with software to edit, and you put it up on YouTube. Pretty easy, right? There's a lot of people that can get this wrong. <laughs> Because so, you want to make sure uh, it's going to be something that, especially you're trying to convey the message of your organization, you want to make sure, you know, it, it, it's great to have this little thing, have it in your pocket, pull it out when you see the opportunity at whatever sort of, or, you know, uh, event you're at. Um, but because it is small, you know, it is, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with it. You know, we, you know in TV use, the big cameras are pretty stationary, there's not much that can go wrong with that, right? Um, with this, one of the big things is uh, uh, on the video side, um, you know, you're going to be more mobile, you're going to be more dependent on the scene and the lighting around you. Um, you know, look, make sure you're not, you know, that's a great view out there. I've made this mistake before too, uh, but on a sunny day, you're not going to get that view of Market Square. You're going to get a giant white blown out thing and a shadow of a guy in front of it. So that's one thing to consider. Um, another thing is overly bumpy video. Um, now, if depending on what you're doing, like I've done, there's been a project that was sent to me that was flip camp mounted on a helmet on a bike ride, and they actually actually did pretty good with it, and, and it fit with it. We threw some some effects over it, and it looked really nice. But if you're doing an interview, like a lot of people will just kind of you know hold this, you know, like this, and and you know, I, I'm not the most steady person either, you know. 
Um, so, I mean, definitely you need to study yourself, and uh, because these things don't have that great for video stabilization. Like, if you have like a handy cam, like it'll take care of a lot of that for you. Like, it's got it's a little bigger. It's got the mechanism in there, and uh, and, and and it'll it, it'll take care of that. Uh, but also, you may notice on these, they got the screw here, and this is a standard tripod screw. And so here you get any kind of like photo, like just you know, the cheap $10, $15 one from Walmart for a tripod, it screws right on there, and you have a tripod and you're ready to go. Um, maybe not something you want to take with you if you're going to events, uh, but definitely if something um, you want to do is sit down interview with somebody and have the time to set it up a little bit. Like it really helps out, really helps out in the long run. Actually a really nice one that helps with the mobility is called a Gorilla Pod. I have, a, I have a friend that uh, we do a video vlog, and there's there's a few pictures of them there. Um, these are the mobile video producer's best friend right here. Um, if you can see, you see by like by this one, these things go everywhere. You could you could even to the point you could wrap this thing around a light pole or you know, or, or you know or something and and have it sideways looking at you or or pulling up like this. You know, it, it's it's great for when you're on the go. Because um, um, I always had a bar, my, uh, my my friend that has a video vlog, he uses a uh, Kodak ZI6, which is kind of like the Kodak version of this. And uh, again, and I swear the uh, the bumpiness is even worse, and it's in HD, which <laughs> so it's high quality bumpiness. Um, so I'm like, we're getting you one of these. He puts it on his desk at work and does, does shows, which is fantastic because he works on the 42nd floor up in Oxford Center. So great view. Um, but but yeah, you can, you can detach it anywhere. You can put it on top of his cubicle. You can put it like on his desk, wherever. Um, I think I got him a little one like this big, which was perfect for running these, about 13 bucks on Amazon. So, and that's the big thing. This is cheap. This is easy. Um, you can you can hand it, hand these things out to a lot of people, and it's a little easier for your budget. I know I know Chris has been handing out a lot of them. A lot of people a lot of people around town have them. Um, another another thing on the video side of it is proximity. Um, I know. Uh, so again, I'm not even entirely sure. I think we're talking about on the front, but it, it's been suspected on some of these that the microphone that picks you up is actually on the back of the device and ju judging by, because and this is something that's been, been made as I go on my vacation and I'm like, hey, look at that whale, you know. So you want this to connect, but if you're sitting there doing an interview, subjects in front of you, you know, you're going to have a problem with that. Um, so what you need to do is sort of strike a balance again and you're not monitoring it, it doesn't have you know, I guess it has a TV out on this one. I think some of the Kodaks may have like a, something you can plug some headphones in, um, which would be really nice. So you can make sure you're getting audio. But if you're not, you need to kind of strike a balance. I can't put them across, you know, 10 feet this way and try to interview the person. Um, so you have to try to get close enough so it's not awkwardly in their face, <laughs> but still pick up the, the audio, you know, adequately. Um, and it's something you can you can fix later uh, if you if you're if you know somebody knows a little bit of uh, sound sound editing um, and we can bring them both up. But that, that is a concern for that. Um, more on the audio. Um, not the best microphone gets the job done, but it will pick up a lot of stuff you're not hearing in here. Like right now, I I hear the fan from my computer. There may be an AC unit that I'm not, you know, audibly hearing, but it will probably get picked up. You know, it, it will find that kind of thing. Um, phones, turn off your phone. It, typically, if you have a T-Mobile and AT&T phone, that is generally what interferes with audio. Oh, no, not now, not now. I know, but it just reminded us. <laughs> Oh no, that wasn't a call for now. Just <laughs> I, mean, I have had plenty of videos from these devices that have been almost thrashed because somebody left their phone on. And it doesn't have to be ringing, it has to be doing anything. Your phone, when it's sitting there, it's pinging back and forth to that tower. And you can say, especially with T-Mobile, especially with AT&T, because they're a different technology than Verizon Sprint phones. But to be safe, just turn it off if you plan to use the video. Because 
sometimes I can fix it. I'm not the greatest sound engineer, but I, can, I know a few tricks. Uh, but, you know, if, if it covers up the audio, that's just going to get chopped out, that part, and you're not going to be able to get much out of it. Um, so that's a big consideration. Uh, background music. If you're out, if you're out about Market Square and there's a band playing, that might be a problem, or you're in a restaurant there's music playing. Uh, not so much, depending on what you're putting this in, you know, not, not so much for the sound covering up, which is a concern, but if you're putting this up on YouTube and they're playing Mariah Carey, you're probably going to pick up that you have Mar Mariah Carey in the background. YouTube has content ID matching, and there's even like enough of a 10 second clip that it can recognize, because it has like an audio imprint or some tremendous technology, I don't know how they do it. Um, it happened to me just a couple weeks ago because I had like a little clip of something played on somebody's phone and I got, oh, you got snagged, you know. Usually they don't take it down, but sometimes they will. It depends on whoever owns the original music that they, they, they tagged. Uh, but that's something, if you can avoid it, don't, don't roll the dice on it, you know. So, so, I mean, you need to be a little aware of what is going on in the background at that point. Um, as far as background noise, uh, a lot of stuff I get is from events, uh, you know, speak. Uh, somebody has spoken, you know, and, and it's like a dinner kind of thing. Um, and, uh, and they pull them aside, you know, in the, in the main hall or wherever they're doing this. Um, and there's all kinds of talking in the background. There's dishes clanging from all the bus boys, you know, and that is kind of like the phone. If it's, if it's clanging over what they're saying, it can make it really intelligible really quick, especially with the small microphones on these things. Um, so, I mean, something like that, if you even pull the person out and say, hey, can we step out in the hallway? You know, can we, can we uh, step aside for a moment? It's going to be a little more to, to step out of the situation, but you'll get a lot more audio, you know, more chance that you're going to, uh, even if they're like, you know, behind a closed door or something, um, a better chance that you'll get a good bit of video, a good, a great audio, you know, and, uh, and you'll be able to use it. So, um, and, and, and a lot of people have also used these where they are, you know, people up at the podium speaking and, and they just add it on the table and it does, if they're on the, uh, uh, um, you know, on the PA system, it does pick that up pretty well on these little things. Um, one other consideration on the video side of these, um, you know, obviously this is a smaller lens than like the one back there, which is usually C and mini DVs. Um, that means when we're talking about the lighting and everything, it, it, it's more sensitive. It's not going to be, you know, even if it, it says it's HD, it says it's 1080p, um, it's not going to be what you want to see on your 42 inch television, you know. Um, because the, the issue is um, you only have that little, like, look, you see the little dot in there. Actually, more accurately on the phone, you can see it. That is all that's bringing light into a device versus, uh, I don't know, does anybody do photography here? So you're familiar, you get the big lens, you know, you know, uh, you, know you get that light in on the sensor and it gives it more information uh, to process. Uh, these things only have so much, and, uh, and it can only process so much of that information. Um, so, so, that, so it'll be more sensitive to a lot of those lighting effects. Person, hello. <laughs> so, we're, we're going to put this online. So, <laughs> so um, and, and, and uh, you know, obviously, flip cams. For those that don't know, apparently, flip cam was was a was a company by itself. They got bought by Cisco. You may know them for uh, routers and internet equipment, network equipment, stuff like that. Uh, apparently, Cisco axed the company, like axed the division. Um, and I, I've still seen them sold. One of my nonprofits I work with just said, "Hey, hey, yeah, we're looking to get some of the Ultra HD." So they're still out there in the in the supply chain, but it's fast becoming. We're going to have to start looking for an alternative to them, which. Really, I really hope somebody buys them honestly, personally, because they're great. I mean, like like we said, I mean, it's a camera with a big red button. You can hand this to anybody, and they should know how to do video. You know, at least right off the bat, they can get something out of it. 
you know, with little explanation. Um, the alternatives are good, but it's not that simple. Um, one of them that uh, a friend of mine that does, uh, does, does some other podcasting, he actually does social media work uh, for Robert Morris College. He uses this guy. It's called the Kodak ZI8. I mentioned before that my friend uses a ZI6, which is just has a little bit less features. Uh, we actually used one of these on a shoot alongside an iPhone 4 and, uh, and, and a main regular camera um, doing a cooking show with some kids. That was interesting. Um, so it was it, so it was decent uh, enough to pair that up, you know, because we had the kids with the little things. Uh, but you see, you know, it, it, this is a little flimsier. I, I, I have trouble getting it out. It's got the red button, but you turn it on, and it's got a bunch of different options like 720p, 1080. I think it does WMV, which is the Windows Media format, um, and you can swap them up depending on what you're doing. Um, but still, it's like it, it lacks the simplicity, you know. It, it, it may be enough that, that you can't just hand this to, to the regular Joe person and, uh, and, and start shooting with it. Um, but as of right now, from the stuff I've seen, this does seem to be uh, the best alternative. Uh, the quality is amazing, I've been told. Um, and the stuff I've seen is pretty good. Um, Sony has an alternative. What's that? Sony has, Sony has an alternative, too. Uh, now, you've been looking at that one? Uh, I haven't really gotten to try it yet, but I know Animal Friends is using that one. Is that the uh, the bloggy camera? Yeah. Okay. So so there's that too, but these are all emerging because I, I know a lot of people just kind of defaulted to the flip cam. Um, but it, this will be something that that kind of comes up as we start running out of flip cams at Walmart uh, at this point. <laughs> so as as they start going away. Um, so I guess, do we have any questions at this point? All right. Um, so I guess uh, the next thing is, uh, what do you do with these uh, once you get your video? Uh, of course, the biggest thing, can, well, put on this program video.org for one thing. Uh, <laughs> but uh, YouTube is the big deal. This is actually the page they have for uh, Pen Future who I work with. Um, uh, but they, they actually, they send me the clips and I edit them and where we're, we can do interesting things with it. Um, but if you're just doing, um, if you don't need that, like some, you know, if you're just doing interviews, you're just doing like some, some kind of session or something, um, you know, you don't need so much of that. Uh, what you can do in YouTube that's really cool is, uh, and again, when you use flow cams, when you're using anything else, uh, you can literally like plug this in, it shows up as a drive on your computer, and you can pull the files. Now, you can take those to YouTube, and it's simple enough, you take the file, and it's as easy as dragging it in right here, and you, you fill in your information, and you're good to go. Uh, but the other, the other nice thing that they're adding, and I play with this just a tiny bit, and I'm never sure where they put it. They have a video editor in YouTube. You don't necessarily need software. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. <laughs> I mean, just the mat. What's that? It's in the side. But it's just just as easy as dragging in clips, and they have some uh, some. You can go in here, I apologize, I don't know what this clip is. <laughs> yeah, it is just a video vlog I was doing, but you can go ahead and stretch it in and, and, and you know, knock your clips down. You know, you talk to somebody and there was a big, you know, camera move where you moved it around before you hit stop recording. You can go ahead and clip that down, go ahead and save it up. Um, you know, so if you shot like a bunch of stuff from, from an event, you can pull these in and, and get it you know, get it to a pretty manageable video that, that, you know, without all the cuts or anything. Um, if you want something a little more robust... Sorry. Yes? So does it mean that you have different clips that are, say, from the same event, you can actually put them together, mm -hmm. separate mm -hmm. videos? Yeah, this stuff here, this is... Basically what this has done is it's taken... And it's actually been updated since the last time I've looked at it. Uh, <laughs> you can... 
this is all the stuff that's up on my YouTube page. And you can upload stuff if you're like, you know, want to just see, well, I'll get to that actually. You can upload everything to your YouTube page, all your clips, all your raw clips, like just toss them, you know, drag and drop them all from your flip cam or whatever you use. And it will all show up here. You can drag them in. Like I said the tools are right here. I don't know what the magic thing uh, is yet. Um, is this? Oh, we, we have a stabilizer. If uh, if uh, if, if your foot cam was a little bumpy, and I mean even to the point, wow, they really updated this since the last time I looked at it actually, and that was like two months ago. Um, but yeah, you you have some pretty good tools right here in the browser. You don't have to worry about like getting Final Cut or Premiere or anything like that. Uh, it's right here. The other thing is, um, how, how many people have PCs here? PCs? For the rest of Macs, I think it? You know, you guys all have video editors installed. Like everyone, like PCs, Macs, both of you guys. Uh, I actually had to, you know, I, this, this is a couple year old Mac. I actually had the opportunity, I had to grab the new iMovie HD. You guys are lucky. <laughs> As a video editor, uh, it's a little weird it, it, for some for somebody that's 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 new to video. Um, there's a lot of video tutorials on it. For somebody like me that's used Final Cut in a professional house for years, it's kind of warps your brain a little bit. But it's got all the tutorials. It's it's very drag and drop. Uh, it's very visual. All your videos when you plug it in, bring it in, they get stored in this nice uh, uh, library, and they call it events um, instead of projects. So, and, and everything is at your fingertips in this thing. If you want to get a little more in depth, this is a very, very powerful tool. I was impressed when I started tinkering with it just a month ago. Um, there's a reason we talked about how the new Final Cut is completely different, because they built it off this, and they needed a reboot in order to do that, because that old one was 10 years old, they bought it from somebody else, and they, the, 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 the groundwork they did on this, because they rebooted this a couple of years ago um, to make it a little bit more powerful. It takes better advantage of uh, the dual processors, the 64 bit, all that you know, technical stuff. Um, <clears throat> and, and it is just as easy as you go in here, there's a transition in titles that's loading. And it's all drag and drop. Like, your place there, I have titles here. Like it, I can drop a title on top of something, and it asks me what to do from there. And so you type right in there, and it does all the processing for you. As I'll mess up, there's an old project, of course, all, all, all my stuff isn't there, but and it's unsung, ironically. <laughs> so, but that, but that's something you know. It'll take a little bit more time to get used to it. Um, Windows Movie Maker is pretty. Pretty simple, pretty, you know, it's, it's enough to get you going. I really haven't played with the new one in Windows 7. Um, but if you're just having pretty simple videos and you're trying to get them online, that's the way to do it. Um, and or, you know, or just use the YouTube video thing. Um, kind of step back about putting your videos up. Um, I mentioned you can put, you know, just upload all your stuff to YouTube. And uh, oh, there's something else in here I want to show you guys. First of all, there's this. Um, we talked about music a little bit before, but you kind of want to put music on your stuff sometimes, right? Like you want you want to throw like a track underneath it, you know, make it a little more interesting. Uh, YouTube has deals with a lot of these artists. Basically, like they have some generic stuff here, and then I think I saw Madonna. No, no, that's something else. That might be Opera. Uh, but you can go in here, and they have all kinds of genres, and they do have licensed music. It's ACDC, you know. I mean, they have some pretty decent names. Maybe they only have a few things from them. Uh, but this is stuff you are allowed to use with videos on YouTube. Um, and, and, and if you're using this, it's perfect. You can do it right here. I don't know. There's another drop down with the artists. So you, you can break down and be like, oh, I really wish I could use a you know, uh, 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 Moby track or something like that, right? You, you can look up and see if they have any tracks by them. Uh, or look at his drive and see if there's anything that sounds like it. And they got, they got everything in here. They got gospel, they got metal, they got mood music. Um, 
instrumental, easy listening. So that gives that gives you a really nice start on it. Um, get the licensing here a little bit. Um, the as far as uploading, you know, we mentioned putting all the clips up. You know, everything shows up there. That's in your YouTube account. You may not want to put all those raw clips on right away. So make sure when you do upload, you have some options. And I've actually been using these in interesting ways lately with some of my clients. Um, let me grab just a see if I can find a random video to put in here. Something that's going to be raw stuff for your uh, for you to use, for you to use in a video editor, or if this is something that not is not necessarily uh, approved yet, you just want to show to somebody. Um, what I've been doing lately is, uh, you know, not, doesn't matter so much what you fill in here, except for your, for your own organization, so you don't lose what flip is what. Um, instead, everything that falls to public, it's up on your YouTube page. I've been lately using the unlisted tab. It's on there. You know, private is, is another thing, but you have to make sure you know their user accounts, and it's always been finicky with me. I always hated using it personally. Unlisted, it's up there, it's on YouTube, it's fully functional, nobody knows it's there. You get a link, email that link to whoever you want to share it with, nobody else can get to it unless they have that link specifically. It doesn't come up with search, it doesn't come up with Google, it's there. So I've been putting raw cuts of certain things on there. It's the easiest thing. Instead of using, you know, some people use an FTP or Dropbox or Mega Upload or something like that to pass files. If it's a video preview, it goes it goes up here because everybody can use it too. You know, kind of the same thing with Flipkin. Everybody can use it for the most part. Um, that's why that's why everyone puts their stuff up there. So, and then if it's something that was like, oh, that's good. That's a final cut. We're good to go. You just go into settings. Knock that uh, setting to public, and you're good to go. So, any questions? So you're saying if, if uh, I have a URL to that unlisted, when I send it to somebody, they can then get on. They can also send it to somebody else, can't they? They can. Yes. I mean, I mean, it's private to whoever has the link. Yeah. So, I mean, if something you don't want to get out, watch you send it to, of course. But, um, but it's really nice uh, to have that accessibility. So. Um, and while we're in here talking about uploading videos, uh, we did, you know, here, we'll actually cancel this and kind of show all the settings for one of these videos. So there's a few things when you are up here, some, some tools you have. One is uh, uh, kind of be conscious of uh, what, you're, um, what you're putting in for information, uh, you know, when you, when you put it up public. Uh, this is how people are going to find you. Um, for this, this is for, you know, again, a tech show I do. Um, and, you know, do your title, you know, whatever, descriptive, or if it's part of a series. Um, description, you know, I, I'm usually, depending on what I'm doing, I make sure people that are involved get named, uh, subject matter that we discuss, if there's any websites or if we're talking about an event that happened or is about to happen, put that information in there because all that stuff will be searchable by something. And that's another chance for people to find your video. Um, so that's just descriptive as, as just descriptive as you can. I mean, for me, for these ones, I have you know the site that I showed you guys at the beginning. I, I put that description that I put in there and I pasted it in here. And, uh, and that seems to work pretty well. Uh, tags, this is probably a bigger portion of your search as far as YouTube goes. When you go to a YouTube page, you see all that related content. This is what it's reading, you know. We, we go to the page for this, there's a good chance we're gonna see videos about Final Cut Pro X Backlash, because we're talking about they're pretty mad about that update. Uh, or the iOS, you know, the iPhone 5 beta. Or uh, uh, we talked about the Supreme Court for some reason. I'm sure it's about copyright or something. Uh, this, you need to fill this out with as many descriptive terms 
that your video falls under. You know. um, and then your category, I'm, I'm usually putting stuff under uh, nonprofit and activism uh, for, for clients in this field. And uh, you, get, you get a nice selection of whole, whole three frames that you put for the thumbnail. That's just the still, you know, when, when they haven't hit play yet, if it's embedded or, or if it's on the YouTube page or whatever. So you can do that. And you can even down to, um, I don't know who is using this, but it is interesting and, I, and I'd be curious when any application does come up. You can put exactly where this video is and what date it was. So instead of, you know, you know put it up in the description as well. But, um, but I, I wonder if, uh, it, and I haven't seen this yet, I wonder if YouTube will have a, you know, much like we're doing in Pittsburgh on video, there may be a point where Pittsburgh on video just says, let's do a search for stuff in Pittsburgh. You know, and they all pop up and propagate. You know, and if, especially if you're doing something regional, that would be really nice. I would suggest doing it to kind of future-proof your video. Um, and when we talked about before, public unlisted, you know, you'd be here, you just pop it up to public, hit save at the top, and you're good to go. Um, licensing. This is important. Um, standard YouTube license, some people are concerned with it. Uh, I'm not, personally. But uh, some people are concerned with it because they, uh, I haven't read it, I'm not a lawyer, but somewhere in there, somebody can say, you know, YouTube can relicense this wherever they want, et cetera, et cetera. Usually that will mean uh, Tosh.0 can get your video and make fun of it, to be honest. Uh, that's the only real application I can think of. Or, or they can grab it for, uh, you know, the Daily Show or the news or, or something like that. There's, there's some kind of uh, stuff like that. Now, but technically, people aren't allowed to reuse it. People aren't allowed to take it take a part of it and, and, and mix it. That's where Creative Commons comes in, which is a big part of the open and free internet that a lot of people promote. Um, how I understand Creative Commons is, uh, if I select that on this video, you are in all my stuff's Creative Commons, by the way, uh, all my personal stuff, at least. You can take my video, you can take a clip of it, you can remix it, reuse it, however you want. I put an attributable license on it. That means if you do use any of my content, you just have to put, hey, you got this from awesomecast.com, you got this from sorgatronmedia.com. You know, that anybody's allowed to use it, I get the plug, I'm fine with that. Our stuff is generally, like I said, talk show kind of format. Um, so it's informational, you know, somebody else can be like, hey, look at what these guys said, or, or if we say something ridiculous, like we've had a recent beef with Nebraska. Um, and they want to make like a, a, a you know techno song about Nebraska or something like that. That's fine, and I can do that, and and we're tagged for that. Um, any any questions about the licensing? I, I think that's can't work in worms because it is. because once you put your stuff up on YouTube, mm -hmm. they can do anything with it they want. They they want to do with it mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. You give them that permission by by just mere posting it on there. Mm -hmm. And then, if you want to take it down, it's still on their servers, and they still have access to it, and they still have the opportunity to do whatever they want to with it. Yes. And my concern is they can take something out of context in one of your shows and make you look real stupid mm -hmm. by taking this one little clip and use it, and it's entirely legal. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I caution people I talk to about YouTube, just read that. That agreement is like 30 pages long. It is. It it's, is. It's really, you're giving stuff away. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's uh, it, and a lot of the argument is uh, you are giving them a lot of leeway when using anything in the cloud or anything like that. You are giving if you're putting your files in the cloud, you put anything like that. You are given a little bit of liability, you know, a, a lay on that. Um, and, and you got to trust who you're giving it to. And, and I haven't seen YouTube. I have seen YouTube do anything weird with it, with with, with stuff that people have been upset with. Um, but um, there are some protections protections under that license that it does belong to you. I think, I think technically YouTube should use it, plus it. Um, but again, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not, I don't know that stuff, um, but I know some people that do. So if you guys want to and need anybody to ask questions to, I can pass you along. Um, now if you do have it on here and you were talking about, you know, um, you know, depending on what you're talking about, you know, it could be something people could, you know, you want, you want comments on. I, I recommend comments to get that feedback, you know, to, to, to keep it social. But we can definitely uh, uh, narrow those down, you know, depending on what you need 
or you know, if it is something that is going to draw, um, you know, you know, the, the haters out, you know, you can you can just get rid of it com completely. There's the the voting system, and uh, and there's other settings in there for other things on YouTube. If you allow comments automatically. Can you still delete them? Yes. Yeah. As a user and account, you can delete them any time. Uh, what I do, like I, I, I leave them open, and I get I set it so I get an email whenever somebody comments because I want to either respond to it, you know, assess if it is a problem, and you know, either do I need to respond to it in the fashion of the problem, or is it someone that just being a jerk? And I just need to get rid of it and make sure they don't. I think you can, you can block them as abusive. And, uh, and, and there's some other settings in there. They're, they're changing it all the time. So, um, so that covers that part. Now, if you are using this, this is a nice feature they give you that really breaks it down. Now, this is on my old account. Uh, there was some remnants of some of the shows I'm doing now on there. Uh, but I, I threw a lot of stuff at it because uh, uh, I had a nice old director account that you could have to put three hour videos up and nobody would care. Um, of course that's a little different now and you can get that a lot easier. Um, but so I have a lot of videos there that are still pretty popular. Um, and so this gives you a nice kind of dynamic of, of what's going on. You can, you can pull these and get a nice subsection like I want to see what happened in this month or I want to see what the heck this spike is. So you can narrow that down and pull that a little closer. This gives you a whole, you know, all kinds of graphs and stuff. Um, breaks it down by demographics is really nice. I have to skew very largely in the male to surprising the 45 to 54 demographic. That's actually kind of probably considering my content on here. Um, and uh, number of viewers and everything. This is one of my top ones. I don't understand. It's a blooper reel for a video I did ages ago. <laughs> And it's the top thing people find for some reason. But we can break it down to exactly how are these people finding it. Um, a lot of them are finding it from YouTube related videos, and then we can break it down. What videos are they coming from? Um, this is really, this is really powerful. Uh, if you guys, if you want to know exactly where people are coming from, you know, obviously you're putting this stuff up here. You want to get the word out. Um, to see where that is, like say say that most of these hits were coming from an external website. Now obviously mine are coming from Google. People are searching, they're finding it. But if I saw, you know, maybe I didn't know about, you know, go, go back to maybe I didn't know about Pittsburgh on video. Something got linked from there, and I was like, what is this site? You know, maybe I should be talking with them more. Maybe I should be promoting with them more. Yeah, it's obviously a big source of your of your of your, you know, incoming traffic. Um, or if if it is Google. What key to, it, it'll break down to? What uh, keywords are, uh, are are coming at you? You know, you uh, certain videos if you have a lot from Google, it'll give you a nice uh, uh, list of stuff that's coming from Google. And if you find your, I know friends that have had their blogs and videos um, have some pretty weird things bring people in, weird combinations of, of terms. Um, but that's something that'll help you assess what are you putting in the tags? What it, how is your description? Um, is, it, is it getting the right people that are searching for the right things? Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a big assessment. I could do a whole session on uh, analytics. Of course, um, I don't know why demographics doesn't work. Communities. I had, I've had videos where uh, uh, I see people like in the Middle East watching them. I don't understand why. <laughs> it's fantastic, um, but if, if it is a bit, if actually if you can go back to the main one, you probably see a lot of them. Um, um, but yeah, it will break it down the country. If you if you do have a message that's a little more broader, you can see you know, you know our Canadians uh, checking in on it. If we're talking about I don't know socialized medicine or something, um, it, you know. Um, and, and that, that can kind of assess, you know, is your message, message getting out there to the right people, the right places as well, if you were doing a broader topic. Um, I think this breaks down by state. Could be wrong. Yes, it does break, it does break down by state as well. So you can see, are people in Pennsylvania getting, are people in Ohio getting it? Um, stuff like that. So, um,
Another thing I have here, uh, for those, if you're using, you know, of course we talked about the codec and the flip, uh, the iPod touches phones, I mean they're nice, uh, say often the camera you, the, the best camera they have is the one you have on you, um, and, and a lot of people have iPhones, Android devices, stuff like that, and I, I, I like, you know, I like having this guy on me because, you know, I can be like, oh look at that, and I have a video and it's ready to go to YouTube, and a lot of these you can get iMovie for the phone as well. Uh, one of the things I like, if you are somebody that's using an iPhone or iPod, is this funny looking character. It's called an Ali Bubo. Uh, basically what it does, it will tell me, but I don't want it to. Your phone fits right there in the back of that. You have a little, you know, we talked about the little lens and not being, you know, bringing light. What it does is it lines up with this lens piece, which you can put bigger lenses on as an attachment to put a little shotgun mic on there for better audio. Um, and you notice how it looks kind of like a batarang. Each one of these points has one of these screw points on it, so you can put it on a uh, tripod. Uh, this you can get really embedded, but um, I've seen people take a monopause, stick it on the top of it, and hang it out the car. You don't want to do that because you're freaking out to lose your phone if it might fall out, of course. But um, but it's been really interesting for that. See, I think he's putting a flash on there as well. Um, but the video side by side, I've seen of these. The person looks closer, looks clearer. The audio sounds better. He doesn't sound like he's a mile away, regardless of where you're filming it. Um, and there's a lot of stuff like this that can, you know, you know instead of getting a full-on camera that can enhance stuff, I've seen microphones that go on the bottom of this that will they'll give you better audio on a flip cam. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff out there that will that will enhance it. <laughs> What's that? Why don't you see a camcorder? Because <laughs> the camcorder doesn't fit in my pocket. So that's that's the, yeah they they are getting pretty small. But, and also the concern is the compression, like, when you're, like, if you're talking about, like, a, a hard drive camcorder that are popular these days, like, they, again, they shoot HD, they have a little bit bigger lens, but they always put it in a really weird format that, that isn't the best. And, and they have all, anytime somebody's hand me this, it's been really weird to edit, and there's been a lot of issues. I can only use it on a PC sometimes, um, so there's a lot of considerations there, too. So, um... Is there any other questions? Is there anything you guys would like me to cover that I haven't so far? Um, like anything that anything you're looking at that uh, might be of interest? Um, so I think that's about it. that's everything I have prepared. So. Um, if you guys have any questions, um, you know, one on one, uh, uh, I'm at, you know, again, storytronmedia.com, um, and uh, I think I have some business cards here if you want before we leave. Um, you can get, email me if you have any questions whatsoever, and uh, I'm willing to help out. Thank you. Are there other sites? that we could uh, use to uh, show our video work on mm. YouTube. Yes. 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 Um, it's actually a good one. Uh, one of them I use is Blip TV. This, they, they, they position themselves as doing a lot more entertainment, but you can put anything on it. Um, Vimeo. Vimeo. Is another one. I think there's one called Vivo. Not to be confused, this one with Vivo Live locally. Um, and in, in some of the, they're going to have different terms. If you are concerned about the, the licenses, um, they everybody everybody that you go to is going to have a redistribution license. Like we can basically we have the rights to rebroadcast your stuff because they're putting it online and they're putting it out online all over the world. So that is going to be something you give up no matter where you put it. Um, but it, it, there are a lot of options to, you know, if, if you find something that's more amenable to your needs. Um, Blip is nice because I put my video to it. It has ads if you want to do 
like you know, like pre-roll ads or on-screen ads or anything like that. Also, this is actually what I serve my shows through, um, my personal shows, because it will actually distribute it to YouTube, to um, other services like Vimeo. Um, I think that requires a, a pro account of Vimeo itself. Um, you will also push it to, actually uh, my tech show, about a third of the people that watch it, watch it on a Roku box on their TV. So that's pretty nice. Um, it's, it's in our place that, that you know, people, people can find you. Um, like I said, Vimeo, I don't, I don't do too much with Vimeo, but I know I get a lot of videos from people that do. And I think that is the concern, is people want something that does give you a little bit more control. They have a pro account. Um, Vimeo, Vimeo allows course. you to position yourself so that you're not going to show up on the screen next to a woman's leg. Um, okay. We all work for churches, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we have to be a little concerned about the advertisement and where we're sitting next to, and the kind of, um, we're not going to let it necessarily open for comment from many, anybody who feels like taking the wrath out on yeah. a church, you know. Maybe I'll also use less compression, a better compression technology than YouTube, so that's what the pro Mm -hmm. Video producers prefer is that network because of that. It gives you a better, higher quality video. It works the same as YouTube as far as feeding it back and embedding it in places. It has a similar code that you that you use um, uh, from YouTube, but um, that's pretty much we use it here at the foundation as well because of that. It's it's a balance because um, it depends on what you're doing. I mean, like if it fits for you, because you need the control, but I, I like a lot of the projects I work with are we want people we want to get eyeballs, you know. If you have a place to put it, if you have a site you're already putting it, it's perfect for you. If you want it on the net and you want it searchable and you want the most people to find it, YouTube is that thing, you know, people are on there and they're searching for it. But again, you you balance the control so. Yeah, YouTube has about forty three percent of the market share as far yeah. as view. So but again, if you got a place people are already coming to and you just want to enhance that with video. Like that, that seems like the, the target for something like this. So, um, and then, you know, like, like Blip is more, we're trying to produce content. But basically, something like Blip, and there's plenty of places like it, uh, are trying to position themselves as a replacement for TV. They're trying to position themselves as a content driven channel. Um, and they will, when they see something that's good content, they will promote it. Um, so, if you are doing like a series of stuff, like we put on Sun on it, um, it, it gives you a nice landing page, and, and again, you know, probably better compression than something like YouTube, um, and a little bit more control over it and where it goes. But then it does also, you know, give us the opening to put it. You know, people can play on a Roku box on, on their TVs. A lot of people are going that way. So, and there's a lot of other devices like, you know, how many TVs you have like popcorn, and Sony has a online distribution through TVs. Um, so you do have the opportunity um, to to be involved with some of those programs as well. So. You can put them on multiple sites, right? You can put it on YouTube. And yes. And yes. Well, actually, it's probably the best strategy. Yes, that's yeah. that's why that's one of the reasons I go with Blip, and I have it distribute to as many places as I can that, that allow me to have control at least. There's also a Tube Mobile T U B E M O G U L, mm -hmm. which will serve it to all the other sites once you give your once you register your accounts mm -hmm. with them. Actually uh, Blip uses two mobile now. Oh so okay. So you just I don't think it's it's not the full fledged thing. I used to use two, two mobile before I went to Blip. Um, I think two mobile will push you to more sites than Blip. Um, but and, and it'll give you more statistics, it gives you a little better analytics of that as a whole. So um, and again, it's a balance of whatever works for you. YouTube also has a nonprofit account that you can register for, which will give you more of the pro features for mm -hmm. free. Um, I don't necessarily know that they help you out with not placing you where you don't want to be with that account, but you could look into that and see if, if that gives you any other benefit as well. I think I've heard about more advertising options when you have pro accounts with YouTube. Um, yeah, and actually, I think it reduces advertising also for the nonprofits. 
I'm trying to remember. I, I signed up for one thing where it was like, don't put me next to smoking ads, don't put me next to alcohol ads, don't be next to, you know, and it could get a whole list of things. Um, and I think more of a place, a lot of see, I think at places like, not Blip, but there was something else somewhere that Blip that was doing advertising, and they, they were like, don't give, don't give me this stuff, we're, we're, not, we're not affiliated with that, you know. Which, which is kind of like settled some of our paying attention instead of just throwing, you know, I, what we used, to, we used Justin TV and Ustream for, uh, for uh, streaming our shows. And they, and always they start putting ads in that have nothing to do, like I get, uh, I get like spray and wash uh, commercials during a wrestling show. Like that doesn't make sense, right? That doesn't seem like a demographic to me, right? Dirty wrestling, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, maybe some dirty wrestling fans, but other than that, um, you know, and it's just, and, and you can tell when you're on a site like that and you have these ads that just do not fit whatsoever. I do enjoy Blip TV. I, I work on, on a web series called Baristas uh, for a friend, and I they usually get a Starbucks commercial at the beginning of it. So at least they're doing that much, right? <laughs> so. Is there an easy procedure to download video from the net to your hard drive? Uh, how would it go from where? Where? Like like from YouTube? YouTube or Vimeo or Vimeo. If, if I'm if I'm gonna teach I'm teaching a photography class. Okay. And I have a clip that I want to show to demonstrate a lens. Yeah. Uh, rather than going that night going onto the net and having to download it and show it, I'd like to do it before and I have it in my hard drive so I can just click and show it. YouTube, you can't officially do it that I'm aware of. I've seen the download link come up every once in a while, but like like on, on, on like your side of the account. But I've had to use like plugins and extensions, and I don't think it's officially approved of by YouTube because I always see them if you're using Firefox or Chrome and you search extensions or add-ons or whatever they call them, uh, you can't find YouTube downloaders. It's usually tough to find that one that works because they seem to keep working around them. Vimeo, I know we get a lot of Vimeo links for the show that we use, and if the user has allowed it, you can do a straight download of the original file. Yeah. So, which has been pretty nice for what we do. The well. other method to go about it is to screencast it. And then what place? Screencast it. Okay. And so you can capture it um, uh, using. And a lot of the software out there is free that does the screen capture, screen casting, and then you you just capture that video from that way, and it puts it in. It still keeps it in a native video file and that kind of stuff. Um, we use uh, Handbrake a lot, which will convert. Um, yeah, from one format to from one format to another. Something one more format usable, as well, which is a free download as well. They handle Flash and Handbrake. I, I use it usually for DVD. That's the big thing. Is I've never used it. That if you're getting stuff from YouTube, a lot of times they'll send you the FLB file, which plays in like nothing but Adobe Flash Player. Um, and a lot of converters don't handle that very well. Steve Jobs doesn't like it either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, one, the one, I can actually tell you what the Firefox is one because I think I have it loaded on here. Um, it's one to investigate. I don't know if you can actively get this right now. Uh, it's just called Fast Video Loader, I think. And it, like if you go to a YouTube page, yeah, Flash Video Downloader. Um, you know, disclaimer, I don't know what this does to, you know, in conjunction with YouTube's policies and stuff. Uh, but it's nice because it drops down and it actually gives you a selection of every format they have available. It's like down to the point where I, if it's something that's done in HD, I can grab the HD feed in MP4 or FLV. MP4 is going to be a lot more usable to more places. Uh, all the way down to, I just want the standard definition. I don't need HD. I just need the video. You know, so that's been nice for graphing for me. Um, I don't know how long it's going to be a long, around. This has actually been around the longest that I've seen an extension. I've been using this for quite a few months now. So uh, the ones on the Chrome usually disappear really quick. So. That, that's that's an option. I guess one of my overall concerns is uh, all of this stuff is fine for people that have a broadband with no cap on it. Yes. But for people like, like we do, we have a little card, and when we get the five gigs, you start paying through the nose. Yeah. It's nice to be able to have something that doesn't take up a lot of 
space for me. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why this would be nice. Because, more. That's, why, that's why this could be nice, because you know how you can drop it down to like 240p and have just like a lower one if, you, if you're having a bandwidth problem, you can grab that 240p version using, using this extension. Um, again, it is only Firefox um, that I'm aware of. But, uh, but yeah, that would, that would be really good for that. So. Um, is anybody interested in streaming stuff? Like, like live streaming shows? Yeah. I can show you guys what we use for that. Um, the main service, and again, we've been on, we, you know, what, back when we were still an audio show for the wrestling show, uh, we were always big on the interactivity. We always had a chat room. Eventually, we started using, you know, we got a crappy, you know, uh, webcam. And uh, we were using blogtv.com at the time. They started having too many ads. <laughs> and then we knew the use for it. They started having too many ads with so Justin TV. Um, get an idea of how annoying some of the ads can get if you don't have a pro account, which now they finally do offer pro accounts. Um, I watched a friend's show um, called Bird's Eye View here locally. I was helping him with some of this video. And every 10 minutes during his show that I'm watching live, mind you, it plays a 30 second ad. Doesn't pause the video. <laughs> it plays a 30 second ad, and it was women's products. It, it didn't make again didn't make any sense to the video that he was doing because it's a very very manly show. Um, that's again you see they're not paying attention for something like that. Uh, currently we're using Justin TV. Um, they do a pre-roll ad right at the beginning. And that's about it so far. They add on the side, they, they capture the video online for us. Um, they give you a lot of, my issue with it is I don't get a lot of analytics off it. I know that we've been viewed 4,926 times since we started this account, which I think was in February. Um, that's just live views, that includes Four shows we do, no, three shows we do live every week. A 24 hour uh, uh, charity marathon we did uh, downtown here in February. And who knows what else we went live for in the meantime. Um, but it's nice, again, uh, Justin TV seems to be where everybody's going for streaming right now. I see a lot of like some of the bigger online networks have been using it. See, he's running, a, running my ad. Um, at least the sports, that makes a little more sense. Um, considering the wrestling show is the last thing I did on here. But, uh, and, and it's nice because the, they have the chat room, which will load eventually, I hope. Um, and and we, since we went to Justin TV, we see a lot of new faces pop in. Not like the weekly, usually they're people. Like we see people will find us on Justin TV, and we've actually at certain points gotten on the front page, I think, on this service. Um, if we had a nice, like a good interview that people were into, and we had a flux in, in viewers at the at, at one time or something like that, and, and it has all the tools in there, so you can tweet it, you can like it on Facebook and everything. Um, it has, I think, on the back end, this one has, uh, you know, usually they have their own kind of like through the browser, it detects your webcam, you're good to go. If you're doing something like maybe you want to broadcast like TV stuff, um, you can interface that in. As long as you have a connection to your computer that brings the video in, it can find that you nine times out of ten. Um, I use something called Wirecast. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, it's it's a little more expensive. It's like I think it's a four hundred fifty dollar program. It kind of handles this for me, and it's a video switcher. Let me actually see if I can bring up last thing. This might be a little more advanced, but um, I was also another one called uh, Points TV, was what I, what I originally used. Again, it's basically you know, you know, like they have in the studios. You know, you can switch videos, switch cameras, everything like that. Put graphics on the screen. There, it's picking up my webcam already. Um, but you can set it up. All I have to do when I'm setting up, I set up my cameras. All right, I, I set up. Uh, um, the graphics for whoever's on the show, 
and I hit broadcast, and I'm set to go for Justin TV. I hit record, it's recorded in the hard drive. Um, once you have your settings right, and this thing will interface with Justin TV, Ustream, and it does have advanced options for a bunch of other things. Uh, a bunch of other online servers and stuff I've never heard of. Um, but it, it will adjust it for bandwidth depending on what you have on hand um, that you want to send out. Um, and I can, depending on your computer, again, I run it on this laptop. If I had a Mac Pro, this is also PC compatible, by the way. So it will go both ways on that. On Boinks TV, it's B O I N X TV, which I think you can pick up for $200. And it's a, it's a, what do they call it? I think it's the uh, uh, so ad sponsored. Ad sponsored, yeah. Like they, they put their logo at the end. Yeah. When Cheap and free, and the uh, up end is, is 500. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the way I recorded things, it never put it on for me. I don't know what I did different, but it never did. I got mine for 40 bucks off of Mac Heist, um, which was like this bundle package they did a few years ago. But uh, this has been really nice. And this is, this is, well, Boinks and then going to this has been, uh, uh, you know, what has kind of converted us to do our video shows. Um, the reason I went to Wiretap, there's my processor up there. When I get that thing going on those two, those two cores, it's about 50%. I was using Boeing, so it was maxing it out every week, and I was getting skips in the video and everything. So this is really nice, and, and this is a late 2009 MacBook. So it's a you know, year and a half old, so um, starting to show its wear.